Evening, Bill. Good evening, Sandy. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. We have got a treat tonight for you, particularly because you. Why is it a treat for me? Well, because you don't know the artist we're going to speak about. Okay. You don't know really anything. You don't know anything about them. Never seen the images before. Is is it is admitting that making me look like an idiot? Am I supposed to know who this artist is? No. Well, not oh, okay. necessarily. I just think it's quite exciting. I would be excited if you showed me an artist I'd never seen before. Yeah, I don't. I, that would be. I would have to dig pretty deep. I think. Well, I don't know about that, but I, your I working would... knowledge is larger than mine because you know you're better at this than I am. True story. But go ahead. Okay. I'm excited. Okay, so. Just before we went uh, into record, I told you that I've been through lots of different titles for this. Yep. And I've ended up calling it Beneath the Surface. I'm not really sure how effective that title is for what we're going to look at. But I also went through a cycle of titles that pertain to femaleness and the feminine. And it came really from speaking with you now several times and for you picking out many times with me that I identify things in photographs we look at as being female or feminine. And I really went away and I've thought about that quite a lot this week. And it, it doesn't trouble me, but it's something I, and I wonder about. Um, and especially because in other conversations I'm having with other people at the moment, I am kind of exploring the idea of how we are bringing, you know, our suitcases of experience with us to everything, but that we're also actually clouding our judgments with our own identifications. And I suppose one of the big questions I've been asking myself and amongst this is, can we look without knowing? And so this is a kind of double whammy because I, I supposed you wouldn't know the artist tonight. So you're looking without knowing. But further than that, I wanted to try and unpick what it means for me to not try to look without my identification as being female, but that if I can stay almost like very, very still when looking or observing, whether being female always has to rush in. Do you right. understand what I mean? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'd like to have you in, you know, a minute or less define what you think femininity is, because I think that it can mean so many different things to so many different people. How, how are you putting it? Where, where, where does it sit in your own mind? You know, what makes something feminine to you? And corollary, are, are, is that definition uh, somehow innate or is that a learned cultural definition of what femininity is? Well, I mean, the obvious way to answer it would be to go with a kind of cultural definition that's sure. accepted and is received. So we could say something that's soft, curved, organic. Yeah. Uh, I could say something that is pink or, you know, I, I, th th there was loads sure. of things there. But actually, when I really settle down into it, and if it's able then to respond in a minute or less, um, and to define it, of course, I could say, well, actually, it becomes something undefinable, feminine. Yeah. So, um, but for, for me, there often is, when I think about the images that I identify female or femininity within, is something to do with quite obviously a female form, the physical form, being curvaceous, the idea of uh, warmth, um, the moon, <laughs> okay. things of darkness, um, milkiness, fluidity. Okay. I don't know if that's what you're really asking me for. Well, it, no, it, it, those are those are fine answers. It's just interesting to me because if you brought up the definition of masculine or showed me images where most people would say that they were somehow defined by masculinity, me even being a man, 
I would push away from those definitions. I would not identify with them. You know what I mean? It's a really thorny issue. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't, I, while I am a man, I don't think of myself as particularly masculine. I don't identify with those things. Those aren't goals for me as a person, you know, where it feels like femininity, you, you is a, is a reflection of yourself in a lot of ways. When we talk about this stuff. The funny thing is, is, and I think I've touched on this before, um, is that although I didn't, um, identify, so to speak as gender neutral in the past, is that I would say that I really didn't embrace my femaleness for a very long time. In fact, I rather shunned it. I rather turned away from it. And uh, that says much more probably just about my sense of my sense of self, also connected to sense of value, self value, and also seeing myself in relationship to another person where I, I think almost like in relief, I was thrown into relief as a female because my former partner is, who's very lovely, uh, is, is what I think of, not as a man's man, but he's very masculine. And so a part of me bristled against this idea of being particularly female because I, I sort of felt like that's, something that I, I'm explaining myself very poorly. I didn't think of myself often in female terms and in actual fact, and if I can be frank and it's not oversharing on a public forum, you know, for years, years, any part of me that was physically female, my breasts, for example, I would hide. I would flatten them down. Right. Uh, I, you know, I would pull sleeves down so people couldn't see dainty wrists and I didn't wear skirts and none of this is important as such, but the bigger yeah. picture that it created was of somebody who was really just trying to avoid <laughs> what is actually quite obvious. Yeah. And then something just seems to have fallen away about that. And I feel much more able to say, well, actually, yes, how lucky I am that I understand, I think at least as much as I can, my own femaleness now. And I'm not afraid of it in the way I was. And that makes a difference to you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's a very odd conversation to have at the beginning of- So, no, I mean, I just, I think it just helps because you know, the, what I, I, what I think I, you were reacting to initially was my comment, I think last week that I, you, you tend to put on sort of feminine colored glasses before you look at a lot of things. Like that's the first words out of your mouth tend to be from a certain perspective. And it's generally a gendered perspective. And I was just wondering if there was a reason for that. Um, which it sounds like there is to some extent, but I just, it's just interesting because it's not something that I generally think about all that much that way. What, what's good news is that it's not an affectation because if I'm, yeah. doing, I'm not trying to do it. Yeah, sure. But you understand my question. Like you understand, I'm not wrong, I guess is, is what I'm saying when it comes to that, that, that is how you're looking at things in a well, certain I hope, way. I hope I understand you. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's see what you got. What you so what? So what are we discussing? Okay, so the whole show tonight has got a selection of work by Esther Teichman, and she is a, a practicing photographer, visual artist, working uh, in London. She, okay. I think, has dual German and American nationality. She was born in Germany, in the Black Forest. Uh, her work is, is quite well documented. She's represented by Flowers Gallery and they have mm -hmm. a good bio on their site about her. But she also has a really rich uh, website herself. And she's also won competitions. And uh, just generally, I mean, if you look at her online, you're going to find lots of stuff. She um, 
creates what I think of as like multi-layered, multidisciplinary work. So there's an element of crossover between photography and painting. Um, a lot of her work is very large. When you see it in a gallery, the, the prints, photographic prints, for example, are very big, um, you know, well over a meter tall. I, I mean, I'm thinking about relationships of m me physically with what I see on the wall. And I always feel like they're therefore quite kind of immersive. Also because with clever curation, when I've seen Tycoon's work, um, I think it's quite significant that often her photographs are presented relatively low down the wall. Um, I don't know if this makes sense. But anyway, uh, Untitled from Heavy the Sea, a uh, series that she has worked on. And I don't know what you make of it just through looking. And again, because you don't know Esther Teichman, I think there's an enormous freedom and liberty in looking and in being able to try and assess or think about how one responds or how you feel about this photograph. It's interesting that the the shape of the rock in the walls almost to me looks skull like all over the place, like almost like it's a catacomb. Um, which on first impression gives me more of a macabre theatrical kind of feel to this image than I think perhaps that she was intending or the way that other people might see it or know more about it. Um, It's it's definitely tripping my tryptophobia stuff going on uh, with me. I don't like holes; it makes me uncomfortable. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, it's interesting too is the 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 color of what she's wearing. The cloth is blends in very much with the rock, right? So it, there's sort of a sense that she's even even though she's actually well. I don't, I'm assuming it's a she, um, is standing there sort of growing out of that, that rock, the way it's all uh, draped over the, 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 the walls mm -hmm. on the edge of that water. This is, this is a very, I get a Hades like feeling from this, uh, as, as a completely dry viewer. Um, do you find it? Yeah. Frightening? Not frightening, just sort of because um, it's not scary. It's just sort of a, well, I mean, I guess it is a little bit uh, treacherous, a little bit threatening, uh, especially someone burying their skin in a place that seems so inhospitable. I, I Why, how do you see it? I feel that she is of, of the space she occupies. So oh, interesting. Like you. Where you I, she feels like a foreigner to me. But go ahead. You know, so where you identified, obviously, the fabric she's draped in is the same kind of color. It kind of blends in. It's as if she emerges. There's elements of her being somehow sculptural um, sure. which sometimes makes me wonder if there's an element of of Tycoon playing with our sense of identifying female forms as objects um, but also the sense that if emerging and this character this body is belonging to the space and is emerging from, from it. Uh, it's a sense of wholeness. Um, mythology, it is fantastical. Yeah, the, I, mythological is a good way of putting it. And I think that in some ways, because of the way her arms are positioned, it almost looks like there's pieces missing in an almost like Venus de Milo kind of way. <clears throat> you know, so it's sort of, I think it plays into that too. That goes back to your sculptural thing. Mm. Well, it's also a very beautiful back. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. 
and I think when I now consider bare skin in this environment I can see what you mean about it being a bit icky almost but I wouldn't really have registered that instead also I really think of the more vulnerability you know what I mean than, than yeah. yeah I don't see that until you point it out yeah. um, the water also has the most um yeah beautiful quality as if it isn't even liquid yet we know it's oh interesting liquid. I see, I see the water and think if you fell in that, you'd never get out. <laughs> this is bringing up maybe some stuff for you that is quite frightening, Bill. I mean, well, I mean, I think that, listen, I think that your mythological comment actually is a, a better way of putting it. Like it does, it feels like uh, uh, some element of a, of, of a Greek story that somebody actually went and photographed. You know, like some sort of Homeric kind of setting. Yeah. But also, you know, we're thinking about is there a message in this? Is there some, what is the meaning of this? What, what could Typhon possibly be trying to convey to us? I mean, is there something specific that we're supposed to realize through looking? And uh, I would say that in, this series of work we're looking at, at cycles of um life of loss experiences of um maybe objectification loneliness um she does work in kind of series or collections and, and also again i mentioned before about being in a kind of gallery setting very often it is important in her work how each piece is juxtaposed with another. Um, it's it's funny though that, he, wait, can we go back just one second? I was gonna say, it, it, it also, this feels very much to me like the person in it is completely alone there, that the photographer is not even there. Yeah. Like the photographer happened upon a situation where the person was alone This is very interesting to me from somebody who takes pictures because I look at it and think, okay, if you had photographed that person, <coughs> excuse me, on white as is, it would be an interesting photograph. But what makes it crazy is the fact that you have this insane location of this cave or whatever it is that, that they're shooting in. Mm -hmm. um, and that, to me, she's she's very small in this composition, you know, to where you you really have to print it big because otherwise she just gets lost in the middle there, you know. Um, but she doesn't get lost. If this if if you I was looking at this at one quarter the size it is, I think it would to me visually. I would have to go. Oh, look! There's a person in the middle there. Um, I mean, I'm also I'm almost at exact opposite. Yeah, saying this is about her being almost discovered. Now, you and I have talked many times about so many things, but right at the very start, we talked about Wyeth and Helga, yep. and the kind of veil that separates the viewer really from her. So he has total purchase on her himself. Sure. Um, in Daydream. Um, with Tykeman, I, I know that very often the models are turned away or their gaze is averted at the very least, never make eye contact with us, but often we just have the back of a head or eyes that are closed. So, we don't have a full, what I think of as um, a full relationship with this character, because actually the character is a vest, it's kind of like a vessel. Sure. Um, and then what fills the vessel up? Well, in this case, you know, again, do I become the emerging feminine? And rather than Wait, what, do, what does that mean? 
Well, emerging feminine to me would be that there's something growing and coming from a well source of deep female wisdom. I need to be careful how I speak about this because I'm very aware of how antagonizing these. Do you think there's implicit female wisdom that men do not have? And equally, is there male wisdom that females don't have? I think there's humanity. Okay, but that's not what you said. No. Or that's not where you were going. Okay. No, it's not in this photograph. That's not how I feel. Okay. I can't take that out of the photograph and talk about it sure. generally. Because I would, I would myself react against that. Yeah. I know in my own reaction that I would bristle against somebody talking about masculine wisdom, male wisdom. Yes? Yes. So I understand that it, it's actually a bit silly then to endorse there being a particularly female or a particular female wisdom. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at, but go ahead. No, I, it, that's why all of this is so interesting. It's also really tricky. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that the vessel that you were talking about filling, yep. which is, which is the thing, I think that if there was something that defines the differences that you and I have towards looking at art is that you, you love the sort of insert your opinion here with quote, with, with brackets around it in, in a definition or, or an analysis of a painting um where where an artist is um is is intentionally leaving a lot up to the viewer to fill in um where to me that feels like a cop out to you it feels like an invitation um so it's, it, and, and I think that like an image like this is very, is, is, is a decent example of that where, yeah, I mean, you could go a thousand different directions with your analysis of this, depending on, I mean, we have even no idea what this person looks like or what they're looking at or what's going on in their emotion. All we're seeing is their back shoulders. Hmm. That's it. That's all we got to work with. I mean, this is something that you can know it if you read about Teichmann's work. Very often she does work with models who are in her life. So for some reason, the, the models she shoots will be very important to her personally. Yes, but how would we know that? Exactly. So I, again, this is what I said before about you coming to this without knowing anything about Teichmann is actually like sure. a great freedom. Because then we meet this fresh. Sure. Even I meet this fresh, really, because I, I have not done anywhere near as much reading or research about this work as I would have done, you know, many of the other artists that we've ever spoken about. In part, that's also because Teichmann is a contemporary artist and by and large, there's not been as much time hanging over to accrue lots of knowledge or information about these people. And, and you're having her on next week on your interview show? I'd love to, my goodness, it'd be amazing. Well, send her an email, I'm sure it can happen. She's a senior lecturer at uh, London College of Communication, I think. I'm sure she'd do it. <laughs> Artists love talking about their stuff. Interestingly enough, too, is, I mean, in these two pictures, uh, can't quite tell, but it seemed like uh, the woman in the last picture was African or black in some way, right? Had darker skin, uh, like a, like a cafe au lait kind of color skin. And this woman is Asian, that there's like a, there's sort of a racial, just like a, a spread too in, in her images. That fog. I think it's in post. Is this person female? Dead? <laughs> um, well, you get into very difficult definitions of what it means to be female. If you're, if you're asking me, does this person have breasts? And therefore I would read this as somebody who is female. Yes. So yes. So we, 
we approach the photograph and we, as, a, as an immediate response to it, say this is a photograph of a female. Sure. And your question rather flippantly, is she dead? Well, actually, is she? Yeah, I don't know. Has she somehow been restrained and suffocated by seaweed the hair by the seaweed yeah or is she in a reverie is she lost somehow not to herself but has forgone the outside so that she can go within uh my my angle on this it's funny when you first put it up when you just flip through them initially I, I read it as she's lying in water, very Ophelia-like. But she's actually lying on dry something. But it almost, it's probably concrete, but it could also be read as like sand, like she washed up like a dead body on the, on the shore. Um, but if she is dead, she's a very pretty corpse. You know, <laughs> it's, it's one of those kinds of situations. Um. Is, is there the same kind of cool detachment maybe between these two or do you feel that they're well this this goes back to your your comment earlier that she tends to not have people making eye contact you know which again just it it, it just it it's it's it, it opens up a space where you can analyze it 12 different ways because just of that like i i am i am of a of great opinion that eyes people looking into say the camera and i'm not saying obviously it always has to happen but like when people look into the camera you're making a connection and if they're not there's a lot of ambiguity about what's going on in their head and what they're trying to say and the question is is it what you know is this woman with her eyes closed lying there, is she trying to say something or is Teichman trying to say something by telling her to close her eyes? Or are we intuiting all of that and none of it's actually the reality and it's just a woman with her eyes closed? You know? Is, Which, is this person being passively observed? Uh, initially, I would say yes, but in second viewing, I would say no. Explain the no. Uh, I feel, and it's probably more because I am starting to like the notion that she is not alive. Um, and that makes me feel like a witness more than an observer. It's like the beginning of a Law and Order episode or something. Dun, 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 dun. Do they have that show over there? It's a huge procedural drama in the United States. They've done like 43 seasons. Um, and it always involves in the beginning a cold open where somebody finds a dead body. Um, it feels to me that, yeah, this model, this person is not giving me all that much. Did this model give you anything? More, if only just because it's interesting because if, if this person was square shouldered to me, it's a lot less than the little bit of a tilt mm. that is giving me, which to your point feels more sculptural than just lying there does. Is there something sculptural about this though as well? Sure. In the sense that anything is sculptural. It's interesting though, if like, if, 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 Yeah, if like if the seaweed was covering their breast, it would somehow be different though, right? Like in somehow the in exposing there is a the the exposure tends to make me think that this is less the subject's choice than not in the sense that they are dead and they washed up and their breast was exposed not was not I'm going to choose to expose my breast in this picture or the photographer is going to. This feels voyeuristic to me. See, you're putting violence into something where I see none. It's I because of the, capacity. it's because of the sea, it's because of the seaweed. I see the capacity that makes me, of violence. Go ahead. And yeah. I, again, this idea of, of these 
figures being almost like vessels that they're there to be filled or used in some way. Um, and this one in its reclined pose or its, you know, kind of morbidity. Mm -hmm. mm, very vulnerable, maybe, but also incredibly powerful. This, this, this figure to me is characterful of the sea of female cycles again. Wait, female cycles? Like yeah, female. menstruation? What, how do you figure that? More to do with something to do with the ocean and the, the moon of, again, of darkness, of somehow being concealed and then revealed cyclically. Okay. How, what, what, why do you think that that is versus this just being a moment and we're seeing, you know, the sun come up over the horizon or something like that from above? How do you see it cyclical? Because of the seaweed, I think, of the ocean. Okay. It's interesting because the seaweed tends to make me think that this is more of a one-off moment more than this is, this is finality. This isn't rebirth. It really is, you know, what's really interesting about it though, is that you and I looking at these pictures, you know, are you or I seeing what we want to see? Well, quite. Maybe well, so point. Do, does any, does any artist ever actually communicate what they're, what they want to communicate successfully, or is it always just what the viewer wants to see? And so basically we're just throwing random numbers at the wall and hoping that somebody sees some pattern in them. I mean, I think you can have people who work in a very prescriptive way and who are very prescriptive with their audience. But not every artist is like that and not every artist needs to be like that. Sure. And I feel very grateful for that art because it gives me some space. There's nothing wrong with admiring the work of somebody else and of acknowledging someone else's great craft and presence in what they produce. Did you think that's what I was saying? That I was being dismissive of it? No, but I am making my own point. Oh, okay. I, I, th I thought you were rebutting mine. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought you were basically saying you're superficial and silly and I love artists. <laughs> I should never say such a thing. Yeah, yo, <laughs> yikes. Hold on a second. I am an artist. What are you talking about? No, you are a real Go artist. ahead. You are a true artist. Oh, whatever. No, I'm just saying, you know. Okay, so what, what about this one? Where are you going? Um, is, this a, is this an image of beauty or is it about something else? Is it about something that is intrinsically innately female or is it about something else? Is, it, is this a bit of smoke and mirrors in this direction? Well, you know, there, there is something based upon what you said when we were first talking about your definition of femininity at the beginning and softness and organic, I think were two of the words you used. The, I guess my question would be, just because we have a naked female in, in a piece of art, does that automatically, is that, is, that a, is that a shorthand for it having some sort of softness and meaning that, okay, yeah, it's just a naked body. Like, do, do we automatically give something credit for just having been, for, for, for using the shorthand of a, of a nude, is a nude woman always those things? Mm. Or could it actually just be a nude woman and it doesn't mean anything? And indeed, yeah. are we looking at an artist who is an artist or are we looking at an artist who is a female artist? And it's like saying, you know, I find this all the time. In fact, you know, lots of, of us talk about this, the sense that, um, you know, if you're an artist and a woman, you are always going to be a female artist. <laughs> yeah, which I, I mean, I think gendering a lot of these things is a waste of time. Yes. I mean, right. wh why not have the Oscars and the BAFTAs be the best actor 
person, the best person who acted, yeah. you know, in a thing. Why are we splitting it gender wise? Like this is all from the 1930s. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. But again, does that mean that gender is devalued at all? I, I mean, I, I might argue that gender should be devalued, but like, that's just me. Okay. So is there value though in saying that these are photographs of femaleness? Or is it not about that? To me, it doesn't make any difference. I'm sure for many people, that is one of the most important things about them. But in, in which case, Bill, I want to know if these photographs aren't about femaleness, what, what could they be about? What is their binding thread, their golden thread? Vulnerability. Okay. Humanity. Exposure. Um, I mean, in all of them, there is a sense of um, uh, 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 there's a juxtaposition between the the natural world and some sort of ultimately vulnerable piece of flesh. You know, um, but is that flesh part of the natural world? in which it's placed sure but you know an alligator could come out of that water right now and eat that woman <laughs> you know it's i don't i don't think that there's anything particularly just because we are humans and are in the world it's it, you know it's like um i spend my wife and i spend a lot of time in national parks when you know times are normal and we can travel and you see people walking over and sitting on the edge of the grand canyon as the sun goes down and you think Dude, that's a 4,000 foot drop straight down. Just because it's a national park doesn't mean that this is a park. It's not Disney World. That's a cliff and you're being an idiot. So just because it's natural doesn't mean that it's safe or not dangerous. No, um, and actually, you know, something that really gave me pause and was a very interesting comment was when I did my talk at Giant on yeah. the relationship between audience environment an artist there was someone in the audience who said that they wondered why i painted nature as a benevolent force and actually i, 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 I agree don't, i don't think i was actually at the time but they raised okay. this point um i don't see nature as benevolent but nor do i see it as deliberately malevolent i don't think it actions what we would think of as human and um, human oh, I, I, Whatever. I get you. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think it's malevolent, but I do think that there is, you know, entropy in nature and things generally just deconstruct from being in nature. Things get overrun, things get destroyed, things get broken down. Like that's, that's just time passing, right? That's yeah. entropy. So I, I, you know, I look at it and I certainly, all of these pictures, if these people weren't there with a photographer taking a picture, these would be places where somebody would be like, wow, I got to find me a dress and get the hell out of here. Cause I'm going to get eaten in the jungle. You know, <laughs> like that's how there's no way somebody's doing this without doing it for art reasons. You know, it's just, it's like, you, you don't go get naked and then go into a river and a swamp. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> you know um, you don't, you don't go into a cave and then a cold cave and then take your clothes off. Not a good idea. Um, this one, it's interesting though, because like, wait, we, we, do we not talk about the last one? I, I feel like we gave the third one short shift. Um, it's interesting because I look at this and I see it as maybe some sort of fallen angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bill, wow, well, that be comes out of left field for you. We've just really? been told that this woman's going to get eaten by a crocodile, but this woman, she's a fallen angel. Well, no, I mean, I think that that's what they're, that feels like what they're going for. Cause you look back and you're like, there's no palm fronds anywhere behind her. So obviously either those were put there so she could sit on them or she fell through the canopy and knocked them down as on her way down, which is why she's getting up from it. I mean, I'm not talking about like really, but like symbolically, I think that's maybe what you're going for. Okay, let's stick Sandy's with laughing at me right now. <laughs> let's stick with <laughs> you don't you don't you don't see what I'm saying? I, I do. Oh, okay. 
symbolically what's but i i this is this is my favorite of the bunch mm. i think the the colors of the green and the brown i think that the the pallor of that woman's skin green and brown the weight, are so difficult it's so difficult to photograph and make look interesting yeah it's it's also a very blue green though right that, that those greens are not shifted towards yellow they're shifted towards blue the print of this is usually very big and also when it's seen in the gallery i mean this is in giant just now in bournemouth the wall it's on has its own image on it as well oh really oh that that would make it difficult for me to like I personally wouldn't like that, but, but, you know, or I would never choose that, but if that's, is that what the artist chose or that's what the gallery decided to do? Well, the artist has chosen that again, if you go and look at Tycoon's website. Oh, interesting. It's been okay. presented in other galleries very similarly. And again, sure. it's with other things that breathe a kind of new life into it. But, you know, I'm, I'm not laughing at you, Bill, but I do find you very amusing because <laughs> You know, if we don't move away from this being mythological for a minute, and yeah. we do think that this character is is a character in yeah. in a myth, and she is emerging from the from the rock or maybe from the water, she strikes a new form, becomes a new thing, transforms. There's sure. something magic in this. And likewise, for me, there's magic here and there's cycle. There's a sense- uh, Wait, can I, can I ask you a question? Does, is there magic here partly because of the sort of, the, the, the godlike flare like coming from the right? Maybe. Like I mean, if you if took away that gradient, I wonder- If this were a Caravaggio painting, we would know that God yeah. is over there. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, and, and I think that that was added in post personally, if, if I had to put money on it, but- but it's interesting that that changes. It's also interesting if you look at this woman, because you can't quite see it, but you can follow the line of her right side down there. Like fr from her, say like breast up, you can't really tell the size of her lower body, but you notice she's actually quite tiny when you see the, like the way her, where her hip kind of goes down, like down towards her waist. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's interesting. The, the shape of that woman is not what you would necessarily expect, you know? <clears throat> Are these photographs full of tenderness? No, not to me. These women are struggling? Uh, not struggling, but I think they're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But if, I mean, if you would replace these with men in these situations, I wouldn't think that they were any less vulnerable, you know? Actually, you know what? Scrap that. I would still think they're vulnerable, but probably not as vulnerable as I think they are since they're women. And that's just, that's not like a, that's not an intellectual statement. It's an emotional statement. Like there is, to, 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 to your point of, you know, your definition of femininity and my definition of masculinity, which I don't even know what my definition of masculinity is, but as a 200 pound, six foot one man, I want to go protect this woman somehow like keep the animals from eating her. You know what I mean? That's like, there's an instinct there, which is just like, oh shit, there's a naked woman in the water and there could be animals in there. Like, do you need help? You know? Is there, um, is there, a, is there a moment at which you suspend that reality to get into this as a zone of otherworldliness or otherness? To be honest, if, if, if I do that and I do sort of get into it just to, it feel, a lot of them, it feels contrived to me. Mm. The situations feel contrived. That one is the least contrived of all of them to me. That's beautiful. That, that's, I'd, I'd buy a print of that if I had $50,000 sitting around. Oh, I would, I'd have this with me. You think, is that your favorite of the four? This is, yeah. I, I love this. All right, so we agree on that. If, if nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> well, Esther Teichman, if you ever see this, 
don't know that Bill is a big giant jerk and don't <laughs> listen to him. I'm not sure we've really rung out the essentials yet, but we will. I, I, can, can, can I want, hold on a second. Can I just say though that they're beautiful photographs, like they're technically beautiful photographs and I'm sure the high res versions of them are stunning. And I'm sure the prints of them are stunning. So I'm not taking anything away from this person's skill. It's just my personal artistic taste more than anything, you know. But, the, you know, but that, the, that last that, the last question has to be, though, Bill, to you. Again, yeah. I've asked it already. I want to ask it again right at the end. Are these photographs, female photographs, forget about Esther Teichman being female and the people within the photographs being female, but are these female photographs? Mm. Um, I think the third and fourth are the first two don't aren't specifically no. See, I'm splitting my splitting my difference. If I had to give a yes or no, I'd say yes. But then I don't even know what it means because you know, definitions of gender are so divisive these days that you know, it's 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 difficult to know what any of it means, and especially as somebody who is. 47 years old like myself an old man exactly thanks bill thank you sandy